time to remain silent, we're going to tie the bread of 241. 241. And we'll sing to him a new name in glory. 241.
Seven, sixty-seven, sixty-seven. I'm going to sing the first stanza of the half to sing the end. Wow. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. I got a little bit of tears that I missed in the program this month. I'm going to call uh, Sister Martin's granddaughter. Huh? Jay, Jay, okay. Yeah, well, I see. She's in. Okay. Here comes the point for us. Amen. Times are good or bad, 
Thank you. 
been so good. I mean, we can't even begin to explain or describe how good God has been. And if He's been good to you, you're here. You're six feet above ground. Give Him a praise this morning. He is indeed the goodness of God.
Yes. Hold on. Hold on. All right, so I'm happy Father's Day once again to all the fathers. Um, we want again that all fathers should please stand and we need all children to please come forward. Um, little kids as well. Um, probably 11 and younger. 11 and younger. If you're 11 years old, Teenagers, let's go. Teenagers, come on, come on and help us out. Thank you. 
Yeah, he is. Right 
me, but I stood behind Brother Benny. Yeah, you, you can be in front of them on the ground. That's fine. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you very much.
only be remembered of Noah. Many would question his success, his successfulness, as a dad, because of these some of these failures that I just mentioned. Genesis chapter nine, verse twenty to twenty-one says, "And Noah began to be a husband, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered with his tent." Father, thank you for today. Thank you, God, for your grace, for your goodness toward us, O oh Lord. Thank you, God, for everything that our eyes have seen and our hearts have enjoyed in the first part of the service this morning. And now, Lord, as we go through the rest of this service, I pray, God, that you may be glorified and hearts may be encouraged, lives may God be edified and elevated. And forgive each and every one when the time comes for us to leave this place, may say it is good for us to have been here. You may also remember the act of Ham, the father of Canaan, as it relates to Noah. What caused this? A lot of times, influence, actions in the lives of one person can cause many people to end up in a wrong way. It says in verse 22 to 27 of Genesis chapter 9, and Ham, the father of Canaan, uh, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren to die. Sam and and Jacob took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and bent backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness and nor awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brother. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Jacob, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Uh, this, these verses that I read have caused a lot of controversy in world, uh, I, I would say in religion as well as in races. This, there is a lot of controversy in this. You'll find this is the only place in the Bible where the word curse on a, on a people is mentioned as it has been mentioned in the Bible or is mentioned in the Bible over times. But there are a group who, who took this and they aligned it with the black race. I don't know how they got there. And they teach that uh, Ham was cursed, but Ham was not cursed. It was his grandson, Cana, who the curse fell on. And that was not to the black race. But think about this. Noah made his success as a was in the fact that he saw every member of his family saved. That was a blessing. What a great accomplishment in the life of a person. I say to you fathers today, one of the greatest accomplishments that you can enjoy or have or make is to see your children and your children's children and your children's children's children come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. Nor raises children in a time no different from the time that we are in today. Read chapter number 6 to verse chapter number 7 uh, to verse 17. You will see that very fact is true. When you equate that with what's going on in our world today, in our society, no matter where you are in the world today, we have the same type of conditions. He raised his family during a time of extreme wickedness. Tell me where in the world you will not find wickedness, even in the place they call the Holy Land. The butchery is going on. Drunkenness is going on. Anything you can think of as it relates to sin is going on in the Holy Land. I've been there. I've been, they call Tel Aviv the, the, the Las Vegas of the Middle East. That is not a good thing. He raised his family during a time of extreme violence. That's when there was killing, robbing, stealing, you name it. Anything to do with violence is going on in the Middle East, in Israel, in Tel Aviv. These, that's the only land. Imagine what's going on 
in our country. You know what's going on there. I was watching the news from Jamaica a couple of days ago, and they were set saying how the Jamaican police were killing the young men um, uh, just because they have the power to do so. In Kingston, Jamaica, they said, I, 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 I don't remember the exact number, but it's a high figure they give of the amount of murder that's going on every day. But then let's look at America, just across the pond from us. Just about every other day, there is a mass killing. Violence. He raised his family during a time when God and his ways were being ignored. People don't want to come to church anymore. Oh. If you bring in one of those of our reggae stars or pop music stars or whatever type of stars to this island right now, you and you don't have to advertise it. I can guarantee if they hear that they're going to be at the Go Play Park tonight, or there will be, listen, there will only be probably not even standing more. Right. People ignore the things of God. He raised his family against the backdrop of an impending judgment of God. We are on the verge of Jesus Christ's return. Yeah. The judgment of God is very near. These are the things that were going on in God. He had all raised his family during an exceedingly difficult time. He had expected all of that or this law made some great achievement that identified him as a successful father. I am not saying that fathers do not make mistakes. They do, they are people. But they are, but we highlight their mistakes, but we never highlight their successes. I wonder why. I believe that every dad in this place would like to be a successful father. But sometimes they are in situations beyond it. Well, the truth of the Bible reveals about this man, Noah. Can, uh, can, um, uh, and help us to see how we can be successful in spite of our shortcomings. Yes, no one had a shortcoming, but he, you have to give him about some kudos for his accomplishment. Whether you are a father or not, there, there is a word here for you as well, because in reality, these achievements that Noah um, uh, uh, made mark him as a successful father and should also be true about every believer in God's family. We should be uh, um, adopt successful because of our faithfulness unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You see, whether you are a dad or not, you are still a person of influence right. in someone's life. Therefore, what these verses teaches us today can help us to be successful in our lives as well. And so let me try to point out to you how the Lord works in the hearts and in the lives of others and identify them as achievements of success. As we begin with Noah, one, Noah walked with God because he was a converted man. Yeah, amen. My dear beloved fathers, First thing, the foremost thing to be in your heart and your life is to go present your Lord and Savior. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. Put God first. Uh, Solomon in his writing, in his writing said, said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean up to thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he should direct thy path. And so, the word that gives us a clue as to where Noah stood with the Lord was grace and just. Grace is the unmerited favor, unmerited love of God towards sinners. Grace shows us our sins and drives us with faith to turn to God for, uh, uh, from our sins for salvation. So the word just refers to our standing, our uprightness with God. So the just means that, that we are upright, that we uh, have been accepted, that we have been cleansed from our sins. Genesis chapter 6, verse 7 to 9 says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beasts and creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But nor found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, and a man and a perfect in his heart, a perfect in his generation, rather, and nor walked with God. 
nor was it changed man. He was a converted man. Now, listen, nor came in a time when the world was here at its worst. The world was on its downward of a spiral. God's judgment was at the door. So tell me, what is your excuse? Why you cannot live for God in this time? If no one was able to live for God, but only him and his family were living for God when the whole world was on its way to hell, and the whole world was on its way to a drowning party, I say to you today, we can live for God. Amen. This is the result. This is the result of responding to God's grace by exercising faith in God and His will. Simply put, this is the message of the gospel. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that none of yourselves is the gift of God, not a work, lest any man should go and so. It is God's grace that shows us our condition before Him as sinners. We know what we are, and you may think that you are good, but the word of God reminds us that there is none. But Romans chapter 10, verse 23 says, And as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Every man in this world is a sinner. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good you may appear to be. And I don't care how many praises you may get from those on the outside. That is good. Nothing is wrong with that. If you did something that worthy of praise, and you get that praise, amen to you. And God bless you. But I'm telling you, you're still a sinner. You still need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Romans 3 and verse 11 says, There is none that understand that there is none that seek after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. You see, verse number 23 says, For all of sin, and come short of the glory of God. I don't care who you are, you are a sinner. Yes, you read your Bible. Yes, you pray. Yes, you come to church. That is good. God bless you. God for that. But that still yet will not make us. Righteous, we are not righteous in the things that we do. We only become righteous because of Jesus Christ. The first Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, He who did no sin became sin for us that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. We are only righteous by the grace of God. That's right. all. Right. And so it is grace that points us to the remedy for our sins in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace makes the cross and the empty tomb real. Oh, I thank God for the cross. Amen. I did not live for the cross. I'd be crying for hours and past the summer's end. And I'm not safe. And so it is grace that provides us with faith when the faith is placed in Jesus Christ because of his grace that we are saved, we are justified, made right, just as though we've never sinned. Romans 10, 9 and 10 said, Thou art who confessed with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. I said, Believe in that heart of God and said, Risen from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. Salvation is possible. Note, God or anyone else, the greatest gift you can give to your family or to your children is for them to know that you are saved by the grace of God and headed to hell. You want your children to follow you. You need to live that life before them. That will mean more to them than your money, your house, your land, your knowledge, everything that you do. That is great. And I believe they appreciate it all one day. You got to start before God. Your life should be a legacy that can never be tarnished or taken away from your children after you are gone. Even while you are here, also God was a consecrated man. Nor was the man who was committed, consecrated. His life was given over to God. And he meant what he said, and he said what he meant. The Bible says that nor was a perfect man. This word perfect means upright. Nor was upright with God. Nor did not mix his word. You know, like people who tell it, who tell it like it is. For some reason, I don't know why. You go to a person and you Get their opinion about something, but you already get in your mind what you want to do or what you're going to do. You like what you think about this, and they and once they um, are here or uh, what your um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, question is or, 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 or what you are trying to ask them to make a, a decision on, they evaluate it, make it and evaluate it. They say to you, tell you what, this is what I see, this is how I see it. And if they, and if they be 
negative to one to with it, then you get mad at them for telling you as they seen it. Nor was a man who told it as it was this carries the idea that not only did Nor had a relationship with the Lord, but he lived out a relationship with the Lord as well. He lived what he spoke or what he preached. One thing to talk about being saved, loving the Lord, but it's quite another thing to actually live it out. You can claim something, but do you possess it? Let me just remind you that those around you are watching. This is what uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. He says, Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. The world watching you, the world watching you, the world know what we are. When they see what we do, let your life so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I'll tell you, who Jesus said, by their fruits you should know them. So, so now I'm going to see you have no right to judge me. I am not judging you. I'm telling you what the word of God says. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But ye too, he said, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A holy uh, foundation and peculiar people that he should show forth. Who that will show? The way he will show. Let the world see. The world ought to see something in you that merit what your testimony are, are or what you say you are. He said, For the praises of him who had called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light. But do not let what you do speak louder to your family. Uh, so your family cannot hear it by what you do. If you say it, make sure you do it. Nor was it consistent man. Are you consistent? Or are you up one day and down the next day? The Bible says that Nor walked with God. Do you walk with God? How are you walking? What is your walking with God meaning you're living right? You're doing what He suggests or what He commands you to do. The idea here is for a consistency in right living with the Lord. Let the world see it. The Bible tells us how to live. Do not be hot one day and cold the next day, up one day and down the next day. Just walk with the Lord. Just be faithful. You see, I'm sure there were days when Lord felt better about things than he did the day before. And I'm sure there were days when he didn't feel so good about it. You and I have the same problems. Listen, you're not going to feel up to it every day, but that's going to change your lifestyle and relates to godliness. Whether you feel good or not, you live with God based on the way you feel. You live for God based on your trust and faith in Him. His word commands us. This will be the testimony of a parent in my, in my being constantly walking with the Lord. Let your children see that. You are staying steady. Consistent. You are saved by grace, living a clean life and a consistent life in your uh, in your walk, in your talk with God. You have accomplished something greater. Anything else, and so number one, no walk with God. Number two, no witness to others. I quoted uh, uh, Matthew 5 and 16 to uh, 18 a while ago. Let your lips stand before men. 5 to 16, uh, 5, 16 to 18. Are your lights shining? The Bible calls for a preacher of righteousness. This means that while he was building the ark, he was telling a lost world that the end was near. And first, second Peter chapter two verse five says, "And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the the, um, uh, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, and bringing and, and bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly." God said. Whole world was on a spiral to hell. Just Noah and his family. Noah and his wife, too. His two sons, four, and their wives, six. These people was on their way to heaven because, or to paradise because of one man. He was telling them about a way of escape by building the ark. 
this is remember now, Noah was building an ark in the middle of the wilderness. No ocean. This was not just a house. This was a boat. This was not just any boat. This was a gigantic ship. And he convinced his two sons to assist him to build this. It was easy for them to look at Daddy and say, Daddy, you know, you're 90 years old, you're 102 years old, you're 104 years old. You have an Alzheimer's. Daddy, why are you building this project? How are you going to, what are you going to do with this when it's finished? Those two boys can say, nah, let's go some place to do this. Because this is what daddy do, don't make sense. Sometimes dad will make some decisions that will not make sense to you. But you see, God gives them the wisdom, the insight to do it. And so what your job is to do, as long as they're not leading you astray, they're trying to lead you in the right and narrow way. You better listen, you better follow. He was telling them about a way of escape. He could not explain it any other way but obey God. He was obeying God. If you got a father that's obeying God, you got to follow. I remember talking to a young lady, I don't know how long, from 20, 25 years ago, and I asked her, I said, do your parents pray? And she was, I mean, she was costing them all kinds of problems. And you know what she said to me? They pray too much. I said, do they read their Bible? That, that's all they do, read Bible and pray. Amen. You know what that young lady is today? She's in the grave. I am telling you, you better listen. Or witness through his conduct. So that's what the Bible says about the people around Lord in that society. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continued. The people around God was only evil continued, but God still lived for the Lord. Then you can live for God. You say, but you don't understand the place where I work. I'm telling you, you can live for God anyway. If no one was able to live for God in a world where everyone else was living for the devil, then you can live for God in the world where you've got a good majority living for God, serving God. Verse number 12, Genesis chapter 6, verse 12 to 13. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh, all, everybody, had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. No one was living for God. When God pronounced his wrath and judgment upon this world that no one was in. Now look at what God said. It says about no in the same world that God is about to wipe out. Verse number nine. These are the generation of no. No was a just man. You and I can live a just life. In this world, and a perfect man. You and I can live an upright life in this world. His, in his generation, and no walk with God. Don't tell me you can't live for God. You won't want to live for him if you're not living for him. But you can. If no could live for God in his generation, you and I can live and serve God in our generation. Was different from the people around him. His very life was a, was a, a living, breathing witness uh, uh, to everyone that was around him. No stuck out in, in his world as a sore thumb. Everybody knew this is what. You see, look, he's been doing that now for over eight years, working on that boat. You think he's, you think he's seen? His testimony was no secret. This is what the Lord expected from his children to be a living testimony. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13 to 16, ye are the salt of the earth. 
He said, but if the sword have lost its savor, where it shall it be sorted? It is, there, it, is hence, it is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it give a light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So the lifestyle Jesus lived is what he desired for you and I to live. And when Jesus said to his disciples, and all of them after him, he says, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. You're going to face some struggles. You're going to face some challenges. But if and when you face them, you still follow. Him. You still live right. The Lord was successful through his victories. Be a witness. Now, listen, it is not popular to talk to people about Jesus Christ today, but talk to them anyway. Tell them about Jesus anyway. While we all lived right and worked for the Lord, he also took the time to tell them about the coming flood. When somebody passed by while the Lord and the sun was getting flight on a huge ship, and someone said to them, What are you all doing? What do you think you're doing? All say there is coming a flood, there is coming a flood. You better get right. Nor of sons, friends, they appeared to come to them and say, You think your daddy is in his right mind? And they said to them, they said to their friends, Listen, I believe my father. I know my father. If he said a flood is coming, a flood is coming. They supported their dad. Fathers. So that your children will support you, that they will lift you up, that they will hold you at a higher standard, and when the world try to take you down, will they stand up for you? My dear beloved, let us be a witness. No matter what. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, Luke writes and said, you should receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Be a witness, no matter what the situation is, be a witness. Let your children and others that look up to you, see you, uh, care enough to tell them about uh, the coming judgment, to tell them about the love of God. Try to get the lost world to come to Jesus Christ. When they see your consistency in that, let me tell you something. That means something to them. Don't you worry about how they behave and how they act sometimes in their presence. I'm telling you, they got to go to bed and they got to stop. Listen, you know what I think best is when I'm laying down. Things that people would have said to me, I began to meander them in my mind. I began to think about those things. And you know, sometimes as I think about those things, I try to dissect what has been said. And I try that I beat up and then I get back to it. I say, you know something? Give me this by giving this by children. Now, children, they hear, they know, they see. And I'm telling you, they have to make a decision. Oh, witness to his commitment. 120 years, no work and preach by building the ark. After all that effort, the only converts he had were his family members. I know sometimes we get discouraged. Surely it must have been discouraging and frustrating in some way for Lord to see thousands of people passing by that that uh, that, that ship. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, as he built it. Generation came and generation went. 120 years. Noah was there building that ark. And they, and they, and you know, can you imagine? Someone said, Boy, I hear building that before my granddaddy died. My granddaddy told me that when, uh, when he was a young man, that, 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 that old senile man was on that building that boat. I'm feeling that. He says, I'm going to flood coming. Flood, what that is? I don't know. But the flood came. The ark was completed. 
defeated. And the flood came. Don't give up. There is payday at the end of the day. You see, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says, And let us not be very and well doing for a due season, we shall be the good faith now. There is coming the day when Jesus Christ will return. And I'm telling you when he comes, as I told a young man um, uh, uh, this past week, I was, uh, I was talking to him, and I, and I told him, I said, I, I, sometimes he gets me frustrated, and I said, man, I said, who do you should be praying for him? And I, I have to, you know, take it, we take it. I said to him, I said, you know something? I said, I got to keep on praying for you. I said, because I don't want you to go to hell. He said the Bible is a book of sinful. But every now and again, he would use the Bible to justify something with you. And I would say, I said, but you just told me to believe in that book. He always says, a good illustration you can use in sometimes. But he don't believe in God that you and I do. He said. But he believed in a lot of other things. Oh, my dear beloved, you know something I do, I got to be steadfast on the world. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for us. Because I know my labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so, and so, with a steady commitment, you will silence your critics. Be consistent. Your know Peter says in 2 Peter chapter, 15, uh, chapter 2, verse 15. For so is the will of God that with well doing he may put to silence the ignorance of your faithfulness will silence your prince. You just be steady. Hold a steady heart. Hold a steady head. Hold a steady mind. Just be steady. Just be steadfast. Let's become the glory. Number three. Nor won his battle. Nor was a successful father because he walked with God and because he was a witness to others. What are you to others? Are you walking with God before your fact? His witness was his faithfulness. His greatest achievement was this. He won his family over. When you can't get your family to follow you, I'm telling you, you need to take a second look at yourself. Don't look good. Uh, we can learn from Noah. In Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for there have I seen righteousness before me in this generation. Can you get your children to go to church? Mm -hmm. You know why you can't get them to go to church if they are not going to church? You see, you can't, when they become men and women, it's too late. Now, I'm not saying that you may not convince them to come after you are, after they are men and women, but the chances are, the challenges are more greater. But you need to get them to follow you from an early stage in life. You want their respect. I can pause here for a minute. Once it's more time, he picks it up. And that's a shot at all. But no children, they acknowledge some things about him. Do your children respect your father? You know why some children respect their fathers? It's because their fathers take their children to friends and not children. When my children were children, especially, I mean, all of my kids, the five of them, but when my boys were boys, let me tell you something, I didn't talk mad things with my boys. I find my men ears, and I spoke men things with my men ears, you know, and if I hear my boy say something, I didn't laugh at that, but there was something that he, that I know what was going to be coming out of his mouth. If I let me tell you something, I would send their, them out, his lips and teeth, they, I, I would have them to, to, to fuse together. Oh, and that's what happened today in our generation. Too many fathers think, you know, they, 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 they talk, men talk with children. One day, respect. In verse 18, 
verse 6 says, But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives, with thee. Chapter 7, Genesis 7, verse 7. And all went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives, with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Genesis 6, verse 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Genesis 7, verse 4. For, for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Now, when I read that, and I, and, I, and I began to think, those people were told that judgment was going to be in seven days. I don't know when Jesus Christ is coming. I wish I did, but I don't know. But they know in seven days the world will be immersed in water. Did you know something? That was like foolishness to them. Can you imagine when we tell people today that Jesus Christ is soon to come, that he is coming to trump of God, will sign the death of Christ for lives first, we which are alive and remain with the Father to meet the Lord in the air. And they, you know, we sound to them like a bunch of fools. But it's our job to consistently tell them about this. When it was time to enter the ark, his sons and their wives followed him in the ark. Why? It's because he followed God. He walked with God. God has let us continue to walk with God. Thank God for the fathers whose children are here today. They are here today because you walk with God. I don't think you I don't think that you will hear today if your child is a man or a woman, or your children are men or women, and they invited you to be here and you're here, it is something you must have done right uh, for you to consider to still come to them today. Oh, I thank God for you who came here only because of your father. You could have been to your church or some other places, but because of your father, you are here. Fathers, you have done something great. Listen, now this is not to knock on those whose children may not be here because they may not be in this environment or whatever. And of course, nevertheless, you, you know what you have done and what you did is what counts, not what people think. When you think of Noah's family, or who walked with God, Noah, his children showed him respect. Notice the contrast between Noah and Lot. What Noah accomplished with his sons and his daughter in law and his wife. What the Lord accomplished with his daughters and his sons in law and his wife. You don't have time to go into it all. Then they knew God, God died into, into Sodom. They said, the Lord went to wherever his sons were, that they were going to attack them from their drinking. And he told his sons, he says, Tomorrow this place is going to burn down. I want you to come go with me. I don't want you all to die here. The word of God said they looked at their father in law and they laughed. They made fun of him. He was not a good influence. He was not successful. His wife and his daughters were home. He went back home where his wife and his daughters were. And the angel of the Lord and the people of Sodom, the men of Sodom began to encircle the house and said, We want you to send these two men out to us. That we may know them. But this is what God said. This is God now. His own two daughters. In Genesis chapter 19, verse number 8. Behold, now I have two daughters, which have not known men. And when I read that, it said he had two sons and 
So now, we all have two daughters that we got married. They were still virgins. Lost, Lot must have lost two of his daughters along with two of his son laws. I pray thee, bring them out unto me. I pray thee, I, I, I'm a, sir, a no man, let me, I pray you, bring them out unto me. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes to kill you. Imagine that. My three daughters are. I'm going to have their children. Never if you come to my house. Have you even imagined? I cry in the eyes. Because I know the men in you will be twice there. God forbid. However, make your offer. I can say, I say, okay, what do I do? I don't want to get them for you. Still in the dark, I'm you fool, you said that I come back. Right in there. Think what will happen. Just think about it. Let the imagination go wild. He said, Don't let us you see good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore keep they under the shadow of my roof. You know what it did with the son in laws? Verse 19, verse number 14. And Lord went out. And spake unto his son in law, which married his daughter, and said, I'll get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that walked unto his son in law. What is it? Lord was able to get his two daughter in law to go into the ark with him and his son and his wife. Lord cannot get his son in law to go with him and his daughter and his wife out into his house to get out of Sodom tomorrow. But let's just stop there. In verse 30, Genesis 19, and Lord went out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him, for he feared to dwell in Zor, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. Verse 31 to 33. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine. Now the first time you drink wine. You got buy, you got to buy the house, you better get it out. And we will lie with him that we may uh, perceive. And received seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Hey, what a drunken stupor. I mean, this is the most despicable scripture in the Bible as it relates to the family. I know a man, he's still alive. He had a bar in his house. What he used to do, he used to take a piece of tape and put on the, on the liquor bottles when he going to work to mark where the liquor was. Now, when you got that kind of fear of your children because of what you're doing, what do you do? You're done with them, done. But the children was just as smart as he was or smart. They would drink the liquor and get water and throw water in the water and bring the fire back to me. You have a son today who is a drunken thief. And a daughter who's in the two daughters who's not who are in the grave. From drinking. My dear beloved, let me tell you something. Children will walk for the most part in the footsteps of their parents. And the younger daughter saw the older daughter did what she did. And verse number 38 says, And the younger daughter, she also bear a son, and call his name Amma, Benjamin. 
and said, It is the father of the children of the Ammon unto this day. They that where the Moabites came from. He could not win their respect. His walk was not a good witness. But I like what the word of God says about Noah. In chapter 7, verse 7, and Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his son Christ with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. When the flood came, Noah had his family with him. Noah had his integrity. He had his children respect. He had his wife respect. Do you know what happened to the Lord's wife? I have not time to go there. Lord's wife has, listen, Lord's wife made it outside of the city. But her heart couldn't leave the city. She was turned to a pillar of salt. Two of his daughters burned down the city along with two of his son in laws. And the two daughters that he got out of the city, they turned around and therefore he committed incest. What? Is that success? That's a failure. That's a tragedy. Noah was a successful father because of his achievements. He walked with God. He witnessed to others. He won his family. I think that is the mark of a successful father. I don't know how you feel about it. It's a good question. Question. Are you saying? Set up a relationship with God? Are you living a consecrated, consistent life for those who are watching? Are you sharing what you have with others? The information that you need for salvation? Is your family in the heart of Satan? Is he? Number five, uh, are you seeing things in your life or those around you? Thank you. 